There is an alarming new development in the already extremely tense relationship between the United States and Russia. Russia has just arrested American journalist Evan Gershkovich and charged him with espionage. Gershkovich is a U.S. citizen. He has been working as a reporter at The Wall Street Journal's Moscow Bureau. He is the first journalist, U.S. journalist, since 1986 who Russia has been charged with spying. CNN's Natasha Bertrand joins us now. N Natasha, the Biden administration learned about this yesterday, we're told. They only just put out an official reaction. So what are they saying about this arrest? Yeah, Alex, we are told that the State Department actually learned about it from the Wall Street Journal, who informed the administration that their reporter had been detained by Russian authorities. But we are getting kind of a flurry of statements now from the White House, from the State Department, about the detention of this journalist, uh, saying essentially that they are deeply concerned about it, that they have been in touch both with his family and also with the Wall Street Journal on this. And also, importantly, that the State Department has been in touch directly with the Russian government about his his detention. And of course, that is directly contradicting something that the Russian government had said, which is that they had received no inquiries from the U.S. government. The U.S. now directly pushing back on that, saying that they have submitted uh, multiple inquiries through the consular services there, trying to get information on when, how, and why uh, this reporter was detained there. Uh, now, we also are getting additional information from the National Security Council uh, coordinator for strategic communications, John Kirby, who told reporters just a short time ago that he does not know whether this detention was in retaliation for the U.S. charging a GRU operative, a Russian spy essentially, just last week for entering the U.S. illegally uh, and for impersonating uh, a, a foreigner, someone he, he wasn't, pretending to be someone he wasn't. However, it is still too early at this point to, to say whether Russia is essentially trying to leverage uh, this reporter's detention uh, for another prisoner swap. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see uh, what happens here. But the U.S. still trying to gather information about why he was detained and whether they can get any answers on when he might be released. As of right now, he is going to be in detention until the end of May, Alex. Yeah, one of the major questions, whether this was a tit for tat. Natasha Bertrand, thank you very much. This is very much the beginning of what could be a long saga. Let's continue this conversation uh, now with Julia Yaffe, a founding partner and Washington correspondent for Puck, who is, I should say, Russian-born and has a very deep knowledge of Russia. Julia, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. And I think this hits particularly close to home for, for you and I. We met years ago as young reporters in Moscow, like Gershkovich. And now we have these accusations of espionage. The Kremlin saying that he was caught red-handed. Uh, what does Evan Gershkovich now face with Russia's legal system? Well, he faces up to 20 years in a Russian penal colony. Uh, and for a young man who's 31, that is his entire youth gone, uh, unless obviously some kind of deal is reached. Uh, you mentioned my background, and it's particularly relevant in Evan's case as well. Although he was born in the US, his parents were immigrants from the Soviet Union, uh, Jewish immigrants. And there is a sense in Moscow, especially in the foreign ministry and in the Kremlin, that people of this kind of background, like my background, uh, they're particularly sensitive to, and they're particularly sensitive to our criticism. Uh, they feel that there, it's a different kind of le level of betrayal. When you leave the Soviet Union, you leave the country, you move abroad, and you basically lob grenades at, the, at your homeland, at your motherland from abroad. Um, and I think that certainly does not help Evan's case. Uh, those of us who had roots in the Soviet Union uh, had bigger targets on our backs, for sure. And like you, uh, he speaks Russian, which of course makes uh, you much uh, very, very strong reporters uh, when it comes to covering Russia. Um, American Paul Whelan, uh, he is of course still in Russian prison, convicted on espionage charges. And, and I was speaking with our Russian colleague, Andrei Soldatov, earlier today, who told me he thinks that Russia will start to bank in his words, bank American and possibly European prisoners uh, for future exchanges. Do you agree? Absolutely. And I think they've already been doing that for quite a while, uh, unfortunately, for the last couple of years. And it seems they're crossing ever brighter, redder lines. You and I both know from when we reported there that there are rules, written rules, and then the much more important unwritten, unspoken rules about what will get you in the most trouble and slightly less trouble, et cetera. 
who is touchable, who isn't. And you and I both know that when we would come back to the States and Americans would ask us, well, aren't you scared for your safety? We both knew that it was actually our Russian colleagues who were in danger. We were protected by our American passports. In some ways, we were untouchable. And that rule, unspoken, unwritten, is now gone out the window like pretty much every other rule in Russia. There is, from what I understand from speaking to people there, a sense that anything goes when it comes to the security services. Anything goes. There are no rules. And it creates a big sense of instability and fear. But even at a time when the relationship was warmer, um, like when you and I were there, which is over a decade ago, the FSB made it clear to foreign journalists that they were being watched. And, and it's something that you, that you reported on at the time. Yeah, they did that to foreign journalists, to foreign diplomats. They would you know, break into their apartments, rearrange the furniture, steal rugs, et cetera, just to let them know that they were not at home, that they were on somebody else's turf, their turf, that they were in charge. And they were completely at their mercy and staying in Russia at their pleasure. But it didn't result in physical harm. It didn't result in arrests. It, is, it resulted in a couple of expulsions, but that was the extent of it. This is a terrifying new low and a terrifying new development. Um, and it's frankly why I have been scared to go to Russia since the outbreak of the war, because of exactly this risk. Because you know, everybody said, well, but they haven't arrested American journalists. And I would say, not yet. And unfortunately, here we are. And since the outbreak of the war, we have seen many independent journalists flee the country. Many of them are trying to keep covering Russia and the war in Ukraine from abroad. And to your point, there has been protection for international journalists who have to be uh, accredited. Many of those international journalists left and then have come back. So now seeing American journalists being arrested, charged with espionage, what kind of chilling effect do you think that that's going to have on this coverage of Russia at what is a very, very critical time? I agree with you. It's one of the most important stories in the world to be covering from inside Russia. And the fact that there is almost nobody there now makes the coverage suffer, makes Russia more of a black box, makes Russian decision making and Russian public reaction much more inscrutable. Um, as you said, American news organizations have been kind of tiptoeing back in. But from what I've heard in light of this news, organizations like The New York Times are pulling people out of Russia again because it's not safe. And to your earlier point about banking hostages, uh, I've been talking to people in Moscow this morning. And from what I understand, it isn't just about a tit for tat for this GRU officer, or this FSB officer who's in prison somewhere in, in the West. In part, it's a sense of we no longer care about the American reaction. They think America rules the world, including the internal, International Court of Criminal Justice at, uh, at The Hague, and that in some ways this is payback for the arrest warrant that they issued for Vladimir Putin, that the gloves are off, we no longer care, it's on. It's on. Well, very scary times for our colleagues uh, in Russia. Julie Yaffe, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your thoughts. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Alex.